so now let's uh, dive into details about the um, multilinear relation uh, regression model, um, especially that how can we understand uh, the the results. So well, this is a Venn diagram that is has has been uh, frequently used to explain how the multilinear regression modeling is working. Uh, however, so it's always kind of misleading. So it's a it's a the famous misleading wine uh, wine diagram. So basically, that means that it is trying to tell that okay, so the beta that we are seeing from the output is that is a variance that in y that has been uniquely explained by each independent variable, uniquely explained by each independent variable. So let's say that we have the, the dependent variable that is y. So for example, the, the house price. And the right circle representing the, the variation of the y. And here we have x1 and also x2. So those are the two independent variables. So the, um, the blue uh, circle and also the yellow circle. So for example, y is representing the area and also number of the bedrooms and also one representing the number of the bathrooms, okay, and also y is the house price. Okay, so what does uh, so th those circles, yellow circle representing the variation of the number of the bathrooms, and also the blue circle together representing the entire blue circle represents the variation of the number of the bedrooms. So what does their beta stand for? So the beta of the x1 is this area. OK, so that means in the, the beta that we have in the uh, model output, the coefficient is that the coefficient that has uniquely explained by the number of the bathrooms, the variation of the y that has uniquely explained by the bathrooms. And the beta for the x2, or the beta for the bedrooms, representing this part. So that is the part that has been uniquely explained by the number of the bedrooms. So that is what the beta uh, of the x2 talking about is. And the r square tells us that the entire portion of the y that has been explained by the model. So the r square tells us this part. Okay, so the entire portion that has been explained um, of the y it has been explained by the model together. Okay, so what we can tell from this model is that first, if we add new variables, it will always increase the R square. So for example, if we increase, if we add in another variable, okay, so even that that variable has tiny part that can uh, relate to the Y, but it still we are adding uh, to the R square so that it always will increase R square. So if you bring more variables into your models, you can always increase your R square. And secondly, if we have two variables that are independent variables that are um, highly correlated and their coefficient may not mean too much. Okay, so what does that mean? So for example, the number of the bedrooms and also the number of the bathrooms are highly correlated. So in an extreme example is like this. So number of bedrooms and also number of bathrooms are highly correlated because if you have more bathrooms, normally or you have, have more bedrooms. Or if you have more bedrooms, normally you have more bathrooms. So they are highly correlated. And if you're using that one to explain the house price, okay, if you are going to use that one to explain the house price, and this is a beta for, for example, the bedroom, and this is a beta for the bathroom. Uh, this is a beta for the bedroom, and this is a beta for the bathroom. A uh, bedroom. So you can see that together, the model doing a great job. So together, uh, so that is this part. 
Okay, together the model is doing a great job. However, if you're looking at each individual coefficient independent variables, and each one doing a terrible job. Okay, it does not mean that they contribute less to the model. It's just because those two variables are highly correlated. Okay, it just means that they are highly correlated. So that's why that in the model we say they don't contribute a lot, but actually they do. All right, uh, so let's look at the results. So for example, here, if we look at the number of the bedroom and of the bathrooms, uh, if we look at this correlation matrix, and we can see the correlation are both highly correlated to the area because both of them are highly correlated to the area. So that's why that in the output, we see that area is significant. Uh, however, the number of the bedrooms and of the bathrooms are not significant. OK, so if you remember that in the previous lecture that if you see the p-values are contradictory to the common sense, then trust your common sense. OK, so this in this case, we know that the house price, the number of bedrooms and of bathroom definitely have great impact on the house price, but they are not significant. In this case, that is because they both of them are highly uh, related to the area. OK, so that's why that in the result, they are not significant. OK, so. Uh, that means that when we interpret result, we should be very careful that whether or not those independent variables are correlated with each other. If yes, then the result can be pro problematic. But R square will still be very high. OK, so the way to tell that whether or not it is a problem is we can check the tolerance. OK, so the tolerance is a matter of the collinearity. So that means that if they are very highly correlated, and if that highly correlated will generate a problem called collinearity. And so that is what the tolerance can tell. So uh, normally, if the tolerance is smaller than 0.4, then that will be a problem. So that means if the tolerance is point less than 0.4, that means we have a a collinearity problem that means that because those independent variables are highly correlated so you should not trust your result and in this case our tolerance are all very high so greater than 0.4 so normally it is not a problem so although the p-value are not significant so uh, it is still not considered a problem and any if the tolerance is less than 2.2, then that suggests a serious collinearity. So in this case, it is not. So based on the tolerance, it is not a collinearity. Uh, another result we didn't tell is called the standard coefficient. OK, the standard coefficient. So the standard coefficient is a uh, variance of the coefficient okay so normally if you want to tell okay so which one has the the biggest impact on your dependent variable so which one has the biggest impact on your uh, on the house price and we can check the standard coefficient so standard coefficient tells us that uh, with everything else being equal so if the area increase by one standard deviation so instead of one unit standard deviation how will the price increase so in this case if the area increased by one standard deviation the price will increase 0 0.384 standard deviation okay so 0 0.384 standard deviation and if the lot size increase by one standard deviation, the house price will increase 0.856 standard deviation. So in this case, you can see that the most important coefficient is a lot size. 
Okay, so lot size is most important coefficient in, in this linear regression model. And if the if the number of bathrooms increase one standard deviation, the house price just increase 0.169 standard deviation. If the number of bedrooms increase one standard deviation, and the price will increase less than 0.1 standard deviation. Okay, so that is what the standard coefficient tells us. And based on standard coefficient, we can tell that which one is, has the biggest influence on the dependent variables. And also based on the p-values, and we can tell that what independent variables have the, are significantly related to the, uh, uh, to the dependent variable.